Well, again, let me just uh, say good morning. It's awesome to be with you. Uh, awesome to join together. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 8. We're going to begin in verse 40 today, right where we left off. Hey, Amy, it's good to see you this morning. Um, and we're continuing in this line of uh, miracles that Jesus is performing and teaching along with those miracles. Uh, uh, again, he's still trying to communicate who he, he is and what it means to follow him, what it means to walk by faith. So today, as we read this text, we're going to really look at two aspects, two, two parts, two, two pieces of faith. So read with me, Luke 8, verses 40 to 56. When Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. And just then, a man named Jairus came. He was a leader of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and pleaded with him to come to his house, because he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. While he was going, the crowd were nearly crushing him. A woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years, who had spent all she had on doctors, uh, and yet could not be healed by any, approached from behind and touched the end of his robe, and instantly her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Uh... When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds are hemming, hemming you in and pressing against you. Someone did touch me, said Jesus. I know that power has gone out from me. And when the woman saw that she was discovered, she came trembling and fell down before him in the presence of all the people. She declared the reason she had touched him and how she had instantly healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the synagogue leader's house and said, Your daughter is dead. Don't bother the teacher anymore. And, when, and when Jesus heard it, he answered him, Don't be afraid. Only believe, and she will be saved. After he came to the house, he let no one enter with, with him except Peter, John, James, and the child's father and mother. Everyone was crying and mourning for her, but he said, Stop crying, because, but she is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him because they knew she was dead, and so he took her by the hand and called out, Child, get up. Her spirit returned, and she got up at once, and when, when he gave orders that she be given something to eat, her parents were astounded, but he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. There's a lot we could look at in this, this encounter, but I do want us to look. We're going to look at these two characters, Jairus, the, the, the synagogue leader, and this woman who suffers from a bleeding condition. I want us to see the different aspects of their faith that we need both in our lives. Let's first, let's look at the woman. Now, the woman has faith that Jesus can heal. That's why she goes to him. We see she's at the end of her rope. She has no hope, nowhere else to turn. And she goes to Jesus, an obedient act of faith. But when Jesus calls, who touched me? Who's there? She's quiet. Why? Well, she has a faith that's shy. She has a faith that doesn't want to speak up. One, because she's a woman in society at this point. She's a lower person in society. She, she, she didn't come to Jesus boldly. She didn't ask him for help and he gave it. In a sense, she took help from him without permission. And she's probably shy because of the nature of her healing. She's shy because of the nature of her bleeding disorder and the problem that she's suffering with. We see from her that, that faith has to be called out of silence. Ladies and gentlemen, when, when you have to be bold with your faith, not only before Jesus, but before people. Don't be afraid to share what God has done. Don't be afraid to say, I came before God with faith, and this is what he did for me. Don't keep the miraculous to yourself, but respond, bringing faith out of the silence. Now we look at the man who does come boldly. He comes saying, teacher, come and heal my daughter. Again, another man at the end of his rope. Imagine your daughter, 12-year-old daughter, sick and dying, nowhere left to turn. He goes to the right place. And he's confident. But look at the lesson he has to learn. Imagine how he feels. He's trying to get Jesus to his daughter as quick as he can. And this woman is, is stops him. Imagine when Jesus turns around and says, Who touched me? Who was it? 
This man is thinking, forget about who touched you. I don't care. Forget about it, Jesus. Let's go. You see, he learns a lesson. He learns a lesson. In him, faith is called to be patient and wait. Faith is called to remain strong while you wait. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a faith that is pulled out of silence, and we need a faith that trusts God enough to wait. Of course, there's other aspects. We could talk about faith all day long. This is what Jesus teaches us here and now. Faith that's called out of silence, and faith that can wait on God. A final observation that I, that I want to share, uh, maybe this is what, what somebody needs to hear today. I was told once many years ago, as I was beginning in ministry, I was told that, that my ministry was going to be the distractions that came into my life. Jesus stops at a distraction, and nobody would have faulted him for keeping going. He stops at the woman. The ministry of Jesus right here is found in the distraction of the woman who's bleeding. Let's not miss the ministry that God has for each and every one of us. You don't miss the ministry that God has from you for you because you don't want to be distracted. Maybe for doing something good, maybe what you think you should, maybe what God has called you to do. Don't miss the ministry that God has laid before you because you won't be distracted. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. Help us, God, to have a faith that will step out of silence and help us to have a faith that can wait on you. Let us take the example of Jairus and the bleeding woman. And God, above all else, let us follow your example and let us not miss the ministry you have for us today because we won't be distracted from what else we're doing. Let us embrace the distraction as your hand and your guidance and your work in this world. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again for being with us. Those of you that joined later or who are watching this later in the day or week, I appreciate you being here. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow right here at 11 o'clock. Hope you have a blessed rest of the day. I love you. Bye.